Welcome back to Bread 41. I am super excited to have with me the wonderful Niall O'Sullivan. Um, Niall and myself go back many, many years. Actually, in fairness to Niall, one of the main reasons I got into food was through knowing Niall. Not to give him too much credit, but it's uh, definitely even true. In starting up Bread 41, he was always there to have a chat to. And he is the head chef for Bang, so he is super passionate about fish. So I think we're going to do some fish. Yeah, so when uh, we were talking about doing a little something here, we were kind of racking our brains to say, you know, what would people like to see at home? And uh, one of the things that always crops up is people's kind of resistance to a bit of fish. So we live on an island, we really don't eat a lot of fish, I know a lot of people who don't eat fish yeah. at all. Um, and what we what I decided to do was something very, very straightforward that you could do at home, but add a couple of the little restaurant elements into it that make a, a delicious piece of fish. Basically to show how easy it is? Or yeah. yeah, so well, you know what I mean? I think it's like anything, you know, there's like a time of year, everybody loves like, you know, slow cooked meats and everything. But I think, you know, in the restaurant, fish is super popular, but I definitely know a lot of people at home and I say, do you cook fish? And it's not often. Yeah. So, a couple of things with that is that, you know, we do live on an island, but we have a bit of a strange relationship with the sea. It being so cold, like I know a lot of people who don't swim, uh, even are just growing up, you know, Fish Friday was kind of bed into you. So yeah, like people, yeah. people were <laughs> It was like, you're happy fish, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but like we have an amazing climate here for amazing selection of fish. So like I was over in Australia, working there, some of the fish you have there are indigenous, about 80, 90% of fish are indigenous to yeah. Australia, but our shellfish here is phenomenal. Just though with the colder climate, I think the fish work a bit harder. Some of the fish you have, just incredible flavors. So that in mind, like wild fish and everything, I've decided to use a farmed fish because it's sustainable and something that we're all gonna have to be a little bit more in tune with as things okay. go on with overfishing and farming and, and all that. So what we've done is we picked a, a piece of fish, which is the sea bream, okay? So sea bream, would be a little bit similar to a, a sea bass. It's a farm fish, okay? So what it, you would have it, it's a round fish. So it's an equal fillet on both sides, as yeah. opposed to a flat fish, which is bigger on one side, one side thin on the other. Yeah. So with the bream, what I've tried to do is show you what you might see in a, in a fishmonger's, okay? Which is a, a fillet of fish. If you talk to your fishmonger, they'll take it off the bone for you, no problem, scale the fish for you and everything. And what I've done is just very simply, when I was talking to people about like what issues they have with cooking fish, very often it is, how do I cook the fish on the pan? I don't like bones. And yeah. also then, if the fish is in the fridge for a few days, it's gonna, it's gonna spoil. Okay, so a couple of those points in mind. The first thing I did is I cut it down the middle to remove the central bones, okay? So this piece of fish here has no bones in it, okay? Which I think is important for some people who have an issue with that. Yeah. The second thing- I think thing, people think automatically when they get a bit of fish, there's gonna be a bone in this, or they're anticipating biting yeah. into a bone, and it's another it, it, discouraged to Exactly, it's, it's like, rather than one major problem, it might be just a sequence of smaller things that yeah. just dis, dis people off, you know, put people off. So, the second thing that we've done is it, we've brined it. Okay, so we've brined it. So with that, and, and a lot of people would say at home, they wouldn't go to this, to this uh, level of work. It's really, really simple. So we've got a, a ratio of sugar, water, um, and salt. And what we've done is we stuck the fish in the brine for one hour, okay? So what that does, the brining does is that it is a really, really, it's a great way to preserve the fish, okay? So in a day or two that would sit in your fridge, perfect condition. You wouldn't have to worry about it starting to break down too much and lose the quality of it. The other thing is that it's adding in great flavor, okay? So like really in restaurants and stuff, we use a lot of seasonings and salt, but sometimes the difference between something being really, really nice and absolutely delicious is just seasoning, a bit of salt. Okay, yeah. so the brining, will really increase the salt level. The other thing, again, from talking to people, is that potentially if you overcook fish, it's dry. By brining it, it's sitting in liquid and it absorbs extra liquid. Okay. So when you go to cook it, you're keeping it really moist, keeping all the flavor from the seasoning, and you're preserving it with the brine. So it works on a few different levels. And in terms of cooking fish, you like to, you were saying before, you like to cook fish in an oven. Yeah, so with that in mind, again, like, you know, we're looking at what is it, trying to really break it down to make it very straightforward for people at home. So. We're gonna blowtorch this fish, which some people might say, I'm never gonna do that. But the thing is, is like anything, when you start doing it and you realize that you can control the temperature and how much it's cooked, it's actually a really consistent way to cook fish. Okay. Also, you don't have to worry about the pans and this, that, and the other. It's, it's actually a very straightforward way. So what we've done is, we've just lightly uh, dressed it with olive oil, sit it on a tray of paper. We're gonna cook that in the oven for four minutes, take it out, remove the paper, and then we're gonna blowtorch it, okay? So we're gonna crispy up that skin, get that lovely, lovely uh, flavor out of it. 
Yeah. And then we're going to finish it with a little bit of, we've made some brown butter and some vinegar. Super, okay. Super simple, really yeah, easy. Yeah, really quick. This will take four minutes in the oven. Okay, brilliant. Super. If you had uh, three top tips for anyone at home, what would it be? So, a couple of things that uh, would definitely stick into mind straight away is education. So, a lot of our issues with a lot of our food is about lack of education. So, for kids at home or adults as well, it's really about spending a bit of time talking to your butchers or fishmongers and really yeah. just understanding what's in season, what's yeah. available, and how to cook the it. The conversation around food again, we talked yeah. to this before about like getting your butcher, your baker going in saying what's available, your fishmonger, what's in season, what do I do with it, how do I cook it, and then being able to ask them for help. Yeah, a lot of times like it just takes time to build up the confidence to, to do these things. You know, some, you know, at the moment we can all take a small step but we have a little bit more time, get in some projects we don't usually cook with, spend a bit more time with the kids or whoever, and actually just kind of step by step grow your confidence in cooking. So we've uh, cooked our fish in the oven about 180 degrees for four minutes, okay? Uh, and then what we're gonna do is just take it off the parchment paper, you can slide it out, and then we're gonna blow torch it, okay? So as I said, you might think the blow torch is a lot of effort and uh, maybe something you wouldn't try at home, but if ever there's a time for trying new things, I think it's this year. This is so, it. This, this is, is the it. time. So I'm just gonna give that a really good blow torch and then finish it with some brown butter and vinegar. So just so look, you get that caramelized nice. I, I got more and more. I hit it like really, really char really well. So it'll take a really good caramelization. So from oven to plate, like six minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as I said, if you have it organized in the morning or if you were even the day before and you come home and you're working or you're busy or whatever, if you don't have the time. Happy with that, chef. Go a little char in it more. A little bit more. Yeah, really, because it, it really uh, adds a lot of flavor to it to get that lovely char. And then you're gonna, you're gonna finish it with some of the butter over here. Okay, yeah. Nice. Just try not to burn the house down with yeah. the uh, blowtorch. That's it. Beautiful. Now that's spot on now. Lovely bit of brown butter. Nice. So another thing like with the season we're talking about it, what makes a huge difference is you caramelize butter to make brown butter and we use the vinegar. So we, we've, you know, by now you can absolutely have a look at some really delicious vinegars. They make an absolutely huge difference to the uh, finished product. So this one here we have has seaweed, soy, uh, it's a Japanese vinegar. We finish that with brown butter and some thyme and it just gives your fish an extra layer of flavor and add that to the brine and everything else. And you got some Crown Prince pumpkin? Yeah, so we just got some seasonal stuff here. So we got some roasted, some Crown Prince pumpkin with some pickle pumpkin, some chicory and some celery leaves and then we finish it over the top with a little togarashi, which is a, it's a sesame Japanese seasoning that they would very often use with sushi. So it gives you a lovely kind of little bit of heat, lovely little bit of texture, and it has a lovely citrus base. So it's like mandarin peel, yuzu peel. Again, you could easily find it online. The other thing then, we just finished the whole thing with a little bit of brown butter and capers. And again, it's like anything, when we're trying to build dishes at home, we really, in, in the, obviously in the restaurant, we have a bigger team and we're really concerned about getting the balance right. But even at home, if you're hitting the flavors of the sweet, the sour, salty, and the bitter, and you're getting your, different notes from the sourness, from the acidity in the yuzu, you're getting the sweetness from your uh, sugar and your salt and the brine. Yeah. All adds together and the finished product when you go to eat so it. So a simple dish, what would you say from start to finish, could you do it in eight minutes, nine minutes at home? Easily, no problem. Super, let's get in. So you're definitely getting the uh, full effect of the seasoning and the brine. And you're getting the lovely uh, vinegar and brown butter finish on the fish. It's actually really good. Really yeah, delicious. Really sweet, little sweet. Delicious. Too, lovely and tender. Super. Thanks for stopping by, cooking some fish. You're very welcome. That's it. Thank Super. you very much.